So, you still want to get good at Blaze Blue. You didn't give up after losing once or twice. Or a thousand times. So you more or less know a bunch of combos and you got a good feel of how your characters work. So, what now? Like, what good are my combos if I get my butt kicked every three seconds and can't even seem to play the game? Well, like I said in the last part, there's a lot more to Blaze Blue than just combos. And I'm gonna tell you what to do. To simplify things, I can divide up certain aspects of the game into three categories. Neutral, Offense, and Defense. Of course, here's the problem. Your approach to these three things kinda changes depending on your character and opponent. Like, a lot in some cases. To do every single character combination would be dang near impossible or would take this video, like, years to actually make. However, I do have some general tips that anybody can follow, regardless of your character or whatever. I know you're looking at me like, wait, wait really? And yeah, really, really. Let's start with arguably the hardest part, neutral. I hate sticking to this like objective, like here's what you have to do kind of style with, you know, helping players get better. So I'm going to do it in my own way, in the best way I know possible. Hopefully it's not uh, too out there. Basically, neutral is the part of the fight where you and your opponent are trying to approach each other, trying to land your hits. There's uh, typically a lot of mind games going on in neutral. Both of you are trying to guess or read each other's movements and attacks. It's cool and it makes you feel smart when you get a hit in, yeah, but dumb when you don't. It's always a tough part of the fight, but let's take it step by step. First, let's talk about pokes. Remember those from the last video? Everyone's jabs are really, really quick, sure. But they're all short range and usually are just good for uh, very specific things. Now, what people consider pokes are both long and quick attacks, usually. For example, Ragnar's 5B or Makoto's 5B. Yeah, they're pretty different in length. Uh, especially in Ragnar's case. Jesus, that's a long boy. But usually every character has at least one. There are attacks that are really good to test yours and your opponent's spacing. Uh, some characters have more than one poke, and it's um, questionable if some characters have real pokes at all, admittedly. But knowing a lot of characters' ideal poking range is very useful, if only to help you against your opponents and will help you space yourself properly. You're gonna use this as well as various movement options in the game to help you in neutral. Dashing, walking, jumping, air dashing, you name it. For characters who lack these movement options, they usually have uh, other tools or skills to help them, like Kakuman with his absurdly long pokes and absurdly huge hitboxes, his meter gain, his counters, and Tager with his magnetism, Azrael and Nine with their invincible dashes, you name it. Need some help in some regards? Here's at least a few general tips that I know. With air dashes or instant air dashes, they can be quick and surprising. Oh, like one moment your opponent is just standing there and then, oh my god! Problem is, they do have a set length, so they can't go any shorter or longer than they are. So let's say you want to be a super prankster and jokester and be like, <laughs> check this out. I'm going to suddenly dash and scare this guy. <laughs> but then you overshoot your dash and boom, you're dead. Or you could undershoot it like a jackass and all of a sudden you're dead there too. Oopsie poopsie! So judge your air dash distance accordingly, please. Like, stop! Let's say instead you just want to jump and not air dash. I mean, that's fair. So long as you don't use your double jump haphazardly, you could always change your trajectory in midair to change your spacing, depending on what your doofus opponent does, of course. But let's say you want to stick to the ground, assuming you're using a dashing character of some sort. One thing you can do is dash forward slightly and then pull up your barrier. You'll do a little slide that propels you forward while also protecting you. You'll move and block. Neat, huh? I don't remember if the game tells you that or not, but whatever. Also, here's a neat trick I only see people utilize every so often. Suppose you're just walking along, minding your own business, and then all of a sudden, you come across a zoner like Nu or Lambda, and you can't get close because they're spamming the screen with garbage. And you're like, hey, what, 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 what do I even do? And honestly, start running, jump while running to keep your momentum, and bury your guard while you're in the air. It's cool, right? I mean, I guess it's technically the safest way to approach the enemy, since you don't have to worry about blocking high or low, and it blocks pretty much any kind of attack. But there's a lot of downsides, I'll be honest. If you land in a bad spot, or you know, you get hit in the air, you're suddenly left blocking, which is generally not a favorable situation. Or if you're a dumbass doing it over and over again, there's a good chance that Lambda is gonna get her cute little butt up in the air and just kinda grab you. You know, the only way to really counter this. Because you were predictable as hell with you dumb bag of the rocks, I don't know. Now, there are some aspects that depend solely on the character you choose, but Tigger has to use different specials and watch really, really carefully to either get close or not be overwhelmed. 
Same for Hakamen to an extent. However, please, please, please keep in mind that a lot of specials, even if they look fast, if they're block, you're shit out of luck. So don't throw them out willy-nilly. In fact, don't do it at all, unless maybe you have some meter to burn to like save yourself out of it with a rapid cancel. With that in mind, don't be afraid to use meter for defensive purposes, you know? I mean, sure, it's good for extending combos and stuff, but I see people hold on to that stuff way too often. Better to use it to save yourself a bunch of health for later. You can always go back to neutral, you know? Now, last bit of advice for neutral I have is test the waters. Move back and forth. Throw a quick little attack now and then. Maybe jump a little or something. Use some projectiles. Just watch your opponent. See how they're like and how they react. Are they aggressive? Timid? <gasps> Crazy? Get a feel for how they react. That'll help you decide what you need to do, ultimately. Now for defense and offense! <laughs> I'm gonna focus on offense right now, and as for defense, um, I guess just sort of reverse these tips I'm about to give you towards offense? I mean, I'll add a little bit more specifics if I feel a need to, but uh, whatever. So bam, you got into them, you knocked them down, you got them blocking, whatever! You basically won neutral for a sec. So, well, okay, what do you do now? Well, a lot of things. Remember, you are in control of the moment, and you either want to open them up, or continue to open them up. Confuse them, surprise them. First off, learn your block strings. Not much I can say about this since, you know, it's character specific. But learn what your Gatlings are. What moves can cancel into other moves on block, remember me saying that before? This will keep them in a blocking position for a while, and if they're impatient, maybe they'll mess up and let you hit them. But block strings can only go for so long before things go back to neutral, right? See if there's any way to reset pressure. Can you jump cancel? Cancel after certain moves? Can you dash cancel? Look for moves that can do these things to get you back in and or start over. Hell, maybe you want to test the waters here and use a move that has a really short recovery time and then you just run up and restart. You can also use jabs over and over and dash in to see how they react and maybe keep them on edge. This is surprisingly effective. Just make sure to be careful and don't leave too many holes in your block strings, otherwise, you know, they'll retaliate. Which brings up to the next technique you should know, stagger pressure. Again, very character specific. Specific, but staggering is where you slow down your block strings and attacks in a somewhat random way that makes you a little harder to read. Like if you're slow your jab usage a little. Sometimes your opponent will notice them and take a gamble on whether you'll try and run closer or try something different. Of course, they can guess wrong and you'll get a hit in. Staggering will also hide your overheads a little bit better too. Usually going full speed on your block strings keeps up a certain rhythm and timing. Uh. And since overheads can be a bit slower, a break in that rhythm can help them block said overhead. But staggering helps throw off that timing. It's really effective. And if you mix up general block strings and the occasional stagger pressure back and forth, it makes your opponent respect you. Make them kneel. We're not worthy! We're not worthy! And for those who don't know what I mean by respect, I mean they won't go out of their way to attack holes in your block string. Or they'll be less likely to get super close and go for throws and jabs and other risky stuff. Of course, respect goes both ways, so keep that in mind. Remember, Test the waters at first if you can. Or, I don't know, go balls to the wall crazy at first, and then respect them. It'll drive them nuts! That said, if you're the one blocking, I'd say until you're getting really good at understanding other characters' pressure, be patient. Don't hit buttons and pay attention. So many people don't freaking do this. There's not much I can tell you besides that and to remember the tips I told you and apply them to how your opponent is probably thinking. Patience is probably the best defense. Now, let me talk about throws. Since you have to be right in their face to use them, it can be kind of hard to find opportunities for them for sure. One typical way, and surprisingly easy way to get in, is to use a thing called uh, tick throws. The most common example is to throw out a bunch of those jabs like I talked about earlier, then suddenly run up and do a throw. Haha, <laughs> you thought! Sometimes if they're not barrier blocking and in the corner, you can cancel your jab into a throw for instant results. It's a purple throw that's easier to escape, but it still surprises some people. But honestly, the hit stun for a jab is so short, you could honestly wait a millisecond so you can make the throw a green one. But be careful. They gotta respect you, got it? Good. Alright. Also, it doesn't have to be a jab. As long as the move is quick and has a short recovery, you can do a tick throw. Jabs are just, you know, universal. Also, if you see your opponent jumps a lot for some reason, whether to escape the corner or just in neutral too much, like I pointed out earlier, call them out. You can also be that annoying lambda. Run up and grab them in the air. I'm serious, do it. Almost nobody expects this. And you feel pretty dope every single time you do it. And remember your block strings? If you can reset your block string ever, throw a throw in there. <laughs> it's a mix-up option. Try and use it. 
And I swear, a large majority of players can't handle throws at all. Hell, just do one when they wake up. That honestly works a lot too. And you, watch out for all these things your opponent can easily do too. This applies to you as well. Pay attention. This is one of those things you're not going to be perfect at at first. I mean, if you notice things like your opponent getting right in your face without attacking, that's probably a throw. Be careful. But anyway, here's some wake up tips. Remember, you gotta surprise them. Trick them. What will you do? First off, watch out for a thing called reversals. They're also known as DPs in a lot of circles, which is named after the Dragon Punch or Shoryuken from Street Fighter. Beginner players learn to rely on these a lot. Reversals or DPs are moves that are very quick and invincible on startup. They'll beat anything if you try to attack them as soon as they wake up. Only a few characters have meterless DPs, but almost all supers in the game have this DP property. So you have to be careful on wake up. However, it's very risky because they have an enormous recovery time. If you block it, they're totally screwed. But that applies to you too. Watch out for them. Especially for characters with meterless DPs. If they have meter, they can DP and still be safe afterwards. At that point, it's a guessing game where 80% of the time, you're gonna wanna bait it out. Where you act like you're gonna attack, but then block as soon as they wake up. And hey, there's a neat trick where you can backdash out of the way at the last second so it actually whiffs. That way, even if they do have meter, they're dead. Neat, huh? So, there's different kinds of wake-ups, like rolls and a quick get-up. Rolls are good for spacing, blah blah blah, you saw this in the tutorial, I hope. But it's super risky since people can usually cover all of their options by doing a type of jump and attack in the corner, or just attack low at any point of the stage when the character hits the ground. Now, other than that, assuming they have no DP at their disposal, or feel like they won't use their DP, there are several options you can do here. But one that I like, and I don't see too many players do, is jump on a wake up. There's a lot of options you can do here. DP users want to DP, and you, depending on the character, you can do a sort of uh, meaty attack that will hit them if they try to roll or get up too quickly, or choose to delay the recovery a little bit. If they try to DP, your attack will go through, but you can still hold down and back and block as soon as you land, ensuring your safety. This depends on timing, of course, and they can easily delay it so this doesn't work. But if they don't do these things because they respect you too much, or don't have a DP at their disposal, they're gonna have to block, obviously. And here's where the sneaky sneaky stuff pops in. <laughs> you can fool them by landing and going low instead, or go for a throw at landing. And my personal favorite works on quite a lot of players actually, is doing an air dash right before you hit the ground. This throws off their timing and expectations at the same time. For the people who are good at the high-low mix-up, this delays the timing of your attack and really surprises the opponent a lot. Do this, please! They'll be like, ha I can block this easily. <laughs> hey, yay. Uh -huh. Now for your homework class, here are some things I want you to practice. First off, practice your block strings. This part is pretty simple. Just go into training and set the opponent to block everything. You can practice with regular and barrier blocking to your heart's content. See which moves have low recovery. Can dash cancel on block. Can jump cancel on block. All sorts of things. Until it is also muscle memory. Practice Hit confirming. Change the opponent to block sometimes. Let's say you actually get a hit in randomly. Your hits aren't always going to be clear cut, you know. And you confirm this into a combo. Hence the name hit confirm. You can only learn this with practice. So do this a lot. And remember, in battle, when doing block strings and resetting block strings, be careful that the opponent doesn't retaliate in some way. Make sure they respect you. Lastly, here's a neat trick you can do to practice defense and training. Make three different recordings of Rachna. Always start by using his 3C to knock you down. Have him follow up with a dashing 2A and then either of these three moves. A throw, a 2B, or a 6B. Make sure you always let 6C hit you and tech immediately afterwards. You can set up to play these randomly in training, and you can get used to defending properly. Good luck, students, and remember, continue to fight real opponents. That's the best practice. Alright, I think that about covers all I can realistically teach you, and 
I'm really sorry if I've forgotten a few things that you really wanted me to cover. I, I just kind of covered things that I personally know and feel like a lot of people don't think about too much, or it hasn't been spelled out by other tutorials or players or whatever, so I hope this helps. I mean, I can't believe you listened to all that. Hopefully, Blaze Blue Central Fiction gets played a lot more for a long time, and I hope you enjoy it better now. I mean, understanding all the trickery and some skills and whether you'll win or lose, well, that's all up to you now. Or, you know, whether you have a wired or wireless connection, yet internet net play warrior you. Get an ethernet cable, seriously, they're like 10 bucks. That's it, no more Blaze Blue tutorials, not even if you ask me, maybe. Hey, while you're here, check out my Twitch, please, and subscribe to this too. I'm gonna focus on game reviews and stuff now, I think. Please and thank you!